use the term friend too loosely. Some of us, we think our friends are people that we have everything in common with. When in actuality, anytime you have everything in common with a person, you are unequally yoked. The Bible, when, when you look on, when you go online on your dating sites, you're always looking for somebody that you got stuff in common with. And in actuality, it's the things that we don't have in common that actually makes us equally yoked. I think we used this analogy before, like last week. If you got, if you have two oxen and they're and they have a, a yoke on them, if both ox have a broken right leg, then the yoke is leaning. That's unequally yoked. But to the human eye, it looks equal because we're both missing the same thing. When in actuality, if one ox has a broken right leg and the other one has a broken left leg, it's more balanced. Why? Because I get to make up for what you're missing. If we're both the same, there is no makeup for what's missing. If there's a deficit, there is a pure deficit because the person that I'm linked to can't make up for what's missing because they don't have it either. So think about Jesus Christ. We are equally yoked with him because with everything. <laughs> and yeah, what did the boy say? They not like us. <laughs> that's, 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 what, that's what the heavenly host is saying. Them down there, <laughs> they not like us. They need us in order to make it. Now, when we start dealing with the word friend, what is a friend? I mean, y'all shouldn't be worse. Y'all call everybody your best friend now. Who said that? Okay, that, okay, that was Angie. I see her little head now. Okay. I just heard a little voice. Go ahead. Some, some, someone you can depend on. Huh? Uh-huh. That's, that's a good biblical thing. Someone who sticks closer than a brother. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, that can be a whole other word right there. Uh, because in this generation, you guys don't know the difference between judgment and correction. A lot of times you feel as though when someone's correcting you, and say, don't be judging me, not judging you. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't correct you. And so we get upset when correction comes because we don't like the vessel it came from and we don't like how it was said. When in actuality, if you take the tone away from it and just look at the words, were they right? Yes, take that part and run with it. Hello, somebody. Now, uh, a friend, okay, I heard a few things, um, but, but I believe it's, if you go into Proverbs, you will find all kind of different words, um, all kind of different sayings about friends. But in this particular passage of Scripture, Jesus is, is at a house, and one thing I love about Christ is he spends a lot of time in homes. He would just show up at the temple or the synagogue because it was just along the way. It was on a Saturday. See, the synagogues back then uh, were primarily like your farmer's market where everybody goes on a certain day to shop and to hang out and do stuff like that. And they would, he would always be amongst people in the common area. And people would be attracted to him, thank you, Holy Ghost, in the common area. See, if your Holy Ghost is different here than it is when you're in a common area, you have to ask yourself, who am I and who's operating through me? Because everywhere you go, there it should be an opportunity for Christ to be on display. Everywhere you go, it should be an opportunity for Christ to be on display. So Jesus, he's at home. And I don't know if he was at his house, but he was at, he was at a house in someone's home. And what's amazing to me about this is all of the 
yeah. Non, they were, yeah, all of the skeptics always had the best seats in the house. The Bible says the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, which means that these guys had doctorates. They knew the law. They knew the word. They knew the word so good to where they, they even told Jesus he wasn't the word. They knew, they, knew, they knew Jesus so much they didn't even recognize who he was because he didn't look like what they had been studying. So instead of receiving the word from God that God was giving, they were there trying to uh, be skeptics of what he was saying. Sitting in church saying, man, I would have preached this that way. I would have taught this that way. Well, he missed this part right here. That part don't make sense. So if it, it, just, just sitting on the front row, not in need of anything. I'm not talking about y'all. Y'all, y'all, y'all good. I saw the look on, on your face. I wasn't talking about y'all, y'all. Y'all missionaries and all that good stuff. Y'all good. But stay locked in. Stay locked in. Sitting on the front row, had the best seat in the house, all just to sit in front of him and look at him. See, see, the devil comes to the front. He doesn't always stick around in the back. And got to realize this. Some, thank you, Holy Ghost. Sometimes the devil rides us to church. So he can see what kind of word we receive in. <laughs> Y'all better talk back to me now. See, when you get mad and something's happening on your way to church, you, this is the devil. When stuff starts happening to you, Saturday night or whatever day it is, right before you go to service, you have an enemy that sees some sort of a change happening in your life. And he is saying, I need to find a way to get to where she getting. Because I need to hear the word that she getting so I can combat what she's getting with something in her life. Y'all not talking back. You. You'll be okay. This is why some of us fail. Because we are inconsistent with our feeding. We plan everything around our job, everything around our children, everything around what we got on the schedule. And if I can make it to church, I'll get there. The same God that you try to celebrate at your house, and it might not be the same one that we're serving here. Simply because if you are eating of the word, you're, let, let me help you here whether you want to realize it or not. All of our understanding of the word is limited. Trying to do it on our own. Why would he give you preachers and teachers? And I'm not talking people that are educated because they went to seminary. I'm talking people that lay before the Lord and get a revelation specifically for your life. I'm talking people that can take a scripture that you've been reading your whole life and bring a new light to it that you've never seen before. That's a right now fresh manner from heaven kind of word. Uh, so these, these Pharisees are so educated, Jermaine, to where they can't be taught nothing. When you are in the position of where you can't learn because you know too much, you do realize there's a way to know too much. There's a way. What tree did he try to keep us from? The tree of knowledge of good and evil, which he was saying is it's some stuff that you really just don't need to know. Because the second you open your eyes and your heart up to it, you can't control what devil is coming through that door. Yes, sir. The devil will allow you to feel like you got it under control. Until you realize, I'm out of control. And by the time you realize you're out of control, you're out there too deep and pride will keep you from getting back together. I know you came because somebody invited you, but this, this word is for you, whoever you are. He, Jesus is in, in the house. And watch this. That word said something. It said, 
And the spirit of God was present to heal those that were sick. Some versions say the spirit of God was present to heal them. And I said, heal them? Hold on, Lord. Who did you just mention? The Pharisees and the teachers. So the spirit of God was present to heal the ones that thought they knew everything. (sighs) And what's so bad is that they know so much, they could not even discern why the Lord showed up. The Spirit of God was present to do one thing, heal. But instead, they are thinking amongst themselves, who is this? You got to learn how to discern and move in the area that the Spirit of the living God is moving in. Every service ain't a prophetic service. Every service ain't a war with me service. Every service ain't a lay hands on them and they will be healed type of service. You have to understand that when I come here, God came with an assignment himself. He says, and the spirit of God was present to heal. Now, watch this. You got four, four men who, who have, have friend, has a friend who is Paralyzed. Meaning that this friend cannot feel. This, this friend is a bunch of dead weight. And they've had to carry this man around for a long time. Now watch this. This man's, thank you, Holy Ghost. This man's uh, uh, paralysis, yes, God. This man's paralysis not only affected him. This man's paralysis affected four other households. His, his inability to move, his inability to walk, his inability to feel, his inability to do anything. See, a person that's been hurt and they are incapable of feeling when they hurt others affect more than the house that they're in. Because there's always somebody willing to carry them and validate that pain. Not really realizing the more you carry and validate somebody else's pain, you begin to get wore out yourself because you're carrying dead weight. Oh, I don't know who that was for this morning. I don't know. You got four friends that, that's going to this man, and here I got to park right here. Somebody got tired. <laughs> Somebody got, got tired of carrying this boy around all the time. Somebody said, look, man, I can't even enjoy myself because we got to pick him up every time we go somewhere. Y'all know how it is. You got that one friend. Whenever y'all get together, it's always something wrong. Y'all ain't saying nothing because it's probably you. All that's parked there. Yeah, you might be that dead weight. Every time we have a good get-together, can't even have a domino game, can't even eat fish, can't do nothing in this. Man, y'all just don't know what I'm going through. I just really need, man, come on, pick him up. I took that personal. Because what happens is is the more they put the dead weight on you, you ever walked away and you just feel drained. Y'all better talk to me. You feel drained. You feel tired. And then they come back to you saying, man, I'm so glad I got the chance to talk to you because I feel so much better. But what you don't realize is they just took all of that dead weight and they put it on your shoulders. And now you're carrying a cross that's not even meant for you. And this person is in love with the attention of being damaged. That's somebody in this room. Everybody ain't carrying the dead weight. Some of us are the dead weight. God didn't create you to be carried around like a baby all day, every day. You're 49 years old. Get out your mama house. Oh, 
I done struck a chord. I, I feel an aggression in the Holy Ghost right about here because all of this pity party stuff has weakened the body of Christ because we want everybody to feel sorry for us. But if God gave you the assignment, he also equipped you to carry the burden. If you were man enough to make the baby, stop crying because you got to go to work. You don't need to be celebrated because you're a good father. You're a man of God. You're supposed to be. Why is he angry? I ain't angry. I'm fed up. All of this woe is me. And then you get all of the, whether you realize it or not, check it out. When we were in Psalm, do y'all got time today? Yeah. Come on. I, oh, I got as much as God gave me. That passage of scripture we got into uh, Wednesday. Psalm 23, he says, thou preparest a table for me in the presence of mine enemies. That presence we discovered ain't always people from an emotional standpoint that you don't like. That presence sometimes are people that you call friend that has said and done something that they can't tell you about. And so when they see you rising, they don't know why you're rising. Only thing they can do is clap for you because you, they've been the enemy to your purpose the whole time and their table's being fixed and you've been elevated right in front of them. So while you mad at people that don't, don't like you, you might need to take inventory of why every time you come around, I get promoted. <laughs> why every time you come around, everything good starts happening. Thou preparest the table for me in the presence of mine enemies. Now you got to ask yourself why every time I go around, she get promoted. Could I be the enemy to her purpose? And let me help you. Who the enemy to your purpose is, is not always intentional. If you are an enabler of somebody's circumstance, you are the enemy of their progress. <sighs> if I'm always there for you, but I never give God a chance to be there for you. I now stand in between you and God. And I make you spiritually handicapped. Because to you, I'm God. Mama, you got to get out of that boy way. Let that man be a man. Ain't nobody going to hurt him. <laughs> in fact, you hurting him more by coddling him. Oh, now, 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 now. These men have been carrying this dead weight. We don't know how many years. And look at what happens. They, 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 they got to walk everywhere, man. This man can't exercise. But he can eat. They ain't had no feeding tubes back then. So sometimes after a while when that weight gets heavy enough, oh God, and at some point you got to realize I got to put this down.